So this is the end of the material that will be covered on the next test. So parametric equations are a set of equations that express a set of quantities as an explicit function of a number of independent variables known as parameters. These equations will introduce a third variable, which is t, which represents time. So you have an x and a y just like you're regularly used to, but this time you're also getting a t, which represents time. So not necessarily a unit of time as in minutes or seconds or anything like that, but if I start something at time being zero, that's the initial point, and then one unit later of time, and then two units. So this, these graphs have direction. So it's a little similar to um, a vector in which there's direction, so you're gonna see little arrows, okay? But you get curves and that kind of stuff, not just lines like the vectors. So both of these, and the graphs look pretty similar, but we're going to talk about the difference between them, okay? The left is parametric, the right is rectangular. So rectangular is what we know. The x is the y, the parabola is the ellipses, the hyperbola, all those things, right? Those are all rectangular. They're on your x, y axis. The parametric is actually two different equations graphed, and we're going to, oh, we're going to do a t-chart first to graph those with directions. So notice a couple of things about these. One, it doesn't start with an arrow because that thing T would be maybe T zero there, okay? And it has directions. So you see these arrows are pointing as I move further along the value of T. So the plane curves are continuous functions. You'll never have to like pick up your stylus and then put it back down again with a gap in the hole, okay? Or, or a start stop of your graph. Once you start graphing, it's one fluid curve, line, something like that. Um, and the points are plotted in the order, or plotting, in the order of increasing values of t. Arrows indicate the direction or orientation of the curve. So if this is where t is zero, then this could be where t is one, then two, then three, then four, then five, as it moves around. As we increase the t, that's the direction that the arrows are going to point. This is how it's written in function notation. So the definition of a plane curve, they're continuous functions, which is what we just said. On an interval i, the set of ordered pair would be f of t and g of t. The f of t is the x value, the g of t is the y value. So basically, we're going to be plugging in values for t into each separate equation, getting a set of values of x's and a set of y values of y's, and then putting those together to get your normal coordinate, and then graph your coordinate, making sure that we put arrows on the graph pointing towards the later t's. All right, so it will look like this. This isn't even an example yet. This is just what you'll need to do. Create a t chart. This time we add an extra column that is labeled t. So here's our t, here's our x, and here's our y. With our equations, which are gonna be x equals and y equals, we'll take the value of t, Plug it in, get an x. Plug it in, get an x. Plug it in, get an x. And then we'll take it, the t and plug it into the y equation. And then from that, we'll get the resulting points, which are going to be an x, y coordinate form. So it'll look like this. Sketch the curve given by the parametric equations, x equals t squared minus 4 and y equals t over 2. Given that t is in between negative 2 and 3 inclusive, which means my t values are going to be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So it's a lot like creating your t-chart except you have to do it twice, right? I have to take that 2 and I have to plug it into the x. So if x is t squared minus 4, then I'll start with negative 2 squared minus 4, or 4 minus 4, which is 0. Then I'll do negative 1. Negative 1 squared minus 4, which is 1 minus 4, negative 3. Then I'll do 0, 0 squared minus 4, negative 4. I'll do 1, negative 3, 2, 0, and 3, 5. So those are my x values. 0, negative 3, negative 4, negative 3, 0, 5. with me so far. Okay, now I'm going to repeat that whole process, but for the y. So y equals t over 2. So I'd get negative 2 over 2. Change the color. 
which is negative one, negative one over two, negative one half, zero over two, zero, one over two, one half, two over two, one, three over two, three over two, or one and one half. So I would say if it requires work, be careful. Don't make a mistake on something silly like that. If it doesn't require work, obviously you can do it in your head. Just make sure it's right. So now I'm going to make my combination of my xy values. So this would be the x and then the y. 0, negative 1. Negative 3, negative 1 half. Negative 4, 0. Negative 3, 1 half. 0, 1 and five and one and one half. And then plot your curve. So zero, negative one, oops. Negative three, negative a half. Negative four, zero. Negative three, a half. Zero, one, and one, two, three, four, five, one and a half. Connect your points in the order that they go, which means this bottom one was where I started. This is where I started. We went around to so this is where I stopped. You want your arrows to go in the same direction. There's no exact amount of arrows. I would say maybe put at minimum three arrows, okay? But really, you just want to make sure that you establish that direction. So a graph without the arrows is gonna lose credit. And that stinks, don't do that. That's the easy part. Questions on that one? Easy stuff, right? All right, let's look at our graphing calculators. <laughs> so on your calculator, hit the mode button. The only reason so far we've gone into the mode button is just to flip back and forth between uh, degrees and radians. But if you look at it now, the one, two, three, fourth one down has a thing that says function, parametric, polar, and sequence. Or F-U-N-C, which stands for um, function, P-A-R, which stands for parametric. For all of these graphs, you want to be in parametric. So you want to go down to parametric, you want to hit enter, and then second quick, get out of that menu. Now when you hit Y equals, you should see that every single individual equals has an X and a Y, right? So it looks like this now. Okay, your function's not there yet, but it looks like that instead of just a Y1 equals Y2 equals Y3 equals, right? Does everybody see that? Yep. So if I want to graph it, let's try gra graphing this one. So 5t goes in the top. Where's that t? You got to go to mode and parametrics. And then hit y equals, like you're graphing. So when you look at your x button, like if you look at that x button, it says x comma t comma theta comma n. That is just a variable button. And depending on the mode you're in, it chooses the variable. So as soon as you put it in parametric, if I hit that button, you get a T, right? Yeah. But that's, it's just a variable. Yep. Can you still click alpha T and get the same? Try it. I actually don't know. That's what I got. Yeah. Everybody got it typed in? And then hit graph. So if you look at your graph, so let me actually adjust my window. If you look at your graph, it does look something like this, right? Everybody good? So the only thing that you would really need to know is where's the zero and where's the stopping point. If I go to my table, so second table, I get the table values there right? So the T is all the way on the left, and I actually think yours probably the first time you open it starts at zero, so it looks like this, right? So it's saying 0, 10, 5, negative 6, 10, negative 54. 
So we know that based on that, so my graph looked like this. I went to second table to find the values to figure out where the zero is. So zero, 10 is where it starts. So when I go back to my graph, I would know that the point that is here is my zero. And if I wanted to arrows, I would know that it would go that way, okay? So be careful because your graphing calculator does not give you orientation. It's gonna give you the shape, but it's not gonna give you the direction. So use it to check your shape, but be aware that it's not giving you direction. You have to figure that out. Because the, and if you look at the table, your T0 is at 10. Your T1 was, I, I just went out of it, but it, it's smaller, right? Yeah, yeah so, if, so if T is zero, then it's at 10. That means that that's your first point. And then in a minute, I'm gonna show you what happens when we adjust the window. Yeah, because it's like T is zero is at 10, T is one is at five, negative six. So I'm moving in that direction. When I graph this one, obviously, it gives you an x and a y again. x is 4, t squared minus 4, and y equals t. But now, my t values are restricted in a different way. It's going from negative 1 to 3 halves. So you are probably, they're not even increments. It doesn't matter as long as you have some points going there. And I would say as long as you have probably like 4 points. So I don't have to fill that chart. I could do negative 1. Whoops, that's easy. I could do negative 1, 0, 1, and then 3 halves because that would be one and a half. Like that's enough for me and then plug them in and see what you get. Okay, second type of problem. So there's three, like I said, in this, in this uh, set of notes. The second type is actually graphing it in a different way by eliminating the parameter. Well, I mean, you could just eliminate the parameter, but then we'll also use it to graph it. So many curves that are represented by sets of parametric equations have graphs that can also be represented by a rectangular equation. Just like that first slide where you saw that there was two parabolas, right? Those parabolas looked almost identical to each other. So we're saying we can actually estimate the graph of a parametric equation using the equation types that we already know, like the parabolas. Um, a hyper, no, not really a hyperbola, a parabola, a line, any circle, anything like that. So one of the equations is going to be solved for t, and then using substitution, you'll take that equation and plug it into the second equation. And by doing so, you will eliminate the t variable, which is the parameter we want to eliminate. So by eliminating parameter, we mean get rid of the t, okay? And then you'll graph using whatever's left, which will be a combination of x squared equals something or y squared equals something. Um, and then the domain and the functions might need to be restricted to graph for accuracy. Meaning if I've got restrictions on domains, like I have square roots, or I've got a variable in the denominator, I have to account for those in order to be able to graph it. So it'll look something like this. It says graph by eliminating the parameter. So I've got two equations, right? x equals and y equals, because this is parametric. They both have a T in them. I want to combine my systems of equations. So I want to solve one of these equations for the other one. Which is easier to isolate T? The Y, right? So I can say if Y equals 1 half T, that T I could solve for by doing what? Multiplying by 2. Multiplying by two. So T equals 2Y. And then if I'm saying t equals 2y, that I'm taking that 2y, I'm putting it into the other equation in place of the t. So we're just doing substitution here. 2y squared minus 4, x equals 4y squared minus 4. What kind of function is this if I graph it? Parabola, right? It has one squared term, yes? Let's get it into standard form. So standard form has the squared term on the left. So I'll move the negative 4y squared to the left. Has the x to the first would be on the right. So it would be negative x to the first minus 4. And you can't have anything attached to the x. So this would be negative 4y squared equals negative x plus 4. And what can it be on the y squared? The 4. So I would divide everything by negative 4. So that becomes 1 fourth x 
plus four. Yep, I could have done it first. So from here, I could have divided everything by negative four. I would have gotten y squared equals one fourth x plus four, and then I would have had to take out the one fourth. And four divided by one fourth is the same thing. Keep change flip by, and it would be minus one. Wait, I did that reverse. Divide it by four. I didn't divide that one by four. This would be plus one, and then take out the one fourth. And one divided by one fourth is, ends up being one times four, which is four. So either way, you get the same equation, standard form of a parabola. So what can you tell me about this parabola? What way does it face? To the right. What's the vertex? <coughs> Negative four zero. Negative four zero. And really, that's all I need you to know. One, two, three, four. Put the vertex, approximate the shape, and that's good enough for me. Now, if I graph it, it might on my calculator to check it. It might be a little bit wider, a little bit more narrow. But it should definitely be a parabola that points towards the right. What do we lose by eliminating the parameter? The end, we don't know which where's the start, where's the finish, right? So we don't have the little arrows along the way. We don't have the end, we don't have an endpoint. Okay, so this is really used just for an approximation of what my parametric equation graph would look like. This would not be 100% accurate. And they get a little bit more complicated. So graph by, thank you, by eliminating the parameter. So I've got x equals one over the square root of t plus one and y equals t over t plus one. Which one's gonna be easier to solve for? And I'll tell you that right now it's not really one over the other because either, either you solve for the right but you have to plug it in underneath a root, right? Or you solve for the left and have to plug it into the fraction in two spots. Solve, let's go left, okay? So we'll go x, square root, I'm gonna cross multiply times t <laughs> plus one equals one. So I just multiplied the root t plus one, both sides cancels out from the right. Then divide by x. How do I get rid of the root? <coughs> square both sides. One over x squared and then subtract the one. So that one's probably a little bit easier to solve in the beginning. Now I've got to plug it in for this T and this T. So I get one over X squared minus one all over one over X squared minus one plus one. This is a Y equals. So I get Y equals I can combine this so it has the same denominator, right? So this would have to be x squared over x squared. 1 minus x squared over x squared all over minus 1 and plus 1 cancels out. So I get 1 over x squared. And then keep, change, flip. And I get y equals 1 minus x squared. Uh, it was 1 over x squared minus 1, so I wanted to get it into one fraction. So I changed 1 to be x squared over x squared. Give them the same denominator, and then you can combine the numerators. Everybody good so far? Let me show you what, so that's standard form, I'll go back, well not standard form, but uh, that's where I'm at. I'm going to go the other route so you can kind of see what would happen because sometimes you can't avoid it. If I wanted to solve y equals t over t plus 1 for t, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to cross multiply, so it would be y times t plus 1 equals t. I have to distribute the y, so it's y times t plus y equals t. I got to get both t's to the same side, so y equals t minus yt. And then I'm going to take out the t, and I get 1 minus y. 
divide both sides by 1 minus y. So I get t equals y over 1 minus y. And then I would have to take this and plug it in here. So x, yep. I took it out So when I get to here, you mean? So you want to get, if you have a variable occurring more than once and you have to solve for it, you got to get them all to the same side and then factor out whatever it is. So you can divide by what's next to it. So I get 1 over the square root of t, which is y over 1 minus y plus 1. Right, that's a plus 1 under all that, right? Yeah. And then y equals 1 over, combine your denominator. This would be y over 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus y over 1 minus y if I give it the same denominator. Now I can combine them. y plus 1 minus y all over 1 minus y. Okay, why is it over 1? Under 1, you mean? Yeah, under 1, sorry. Because it's 1 over, I'm using this one. 1 over x, the square root of t plus 1. Oh, okay. So I just plugged in for the t. Okay. So I'm at 1 over 1 minus y. And then you can actually square both sides of your equation. x squared would equal 1 over 1 over 1 minus y. x squared, keep change flip, 1 minus y over 1 equals 1 minus y. So one way or the other, I can't even zoom out anymore. I end up with some form of this, right? I know this is a what? Parabola again. This time the squared term should be on the left, so I'm closer here than I am on the top, but I'd still have to rearrange it. So if I move this one over, I get x squared. Move this one over, I get negative y plus 1. And the negative can't be on the y. And now it's in standard form. So if I did it here, I would just have to reverse it. And then still take out the negative. So this is my equation in standard form. What kind of parabola is that? Pointing down, right? Because it's an x squared and a negative. What's the vertex? Zero, Zero one. So, Wait, pointing down? Yeah, because it's an x squared and the p is negative, right? So my vertex is here and it's pointing down. So sometimes they're easy and sometimes they're a little bit more complicated. Okay, but the process is the same. You're solving one of those equations for t and then you're taking it and plug it back into the other one. Questions on eliminating the parameter. So the other part of eliminating the parameter mentioned that you might have to restrict your domain in order for it to work. So if I look back at my initial functions, would the domains be restricted on either of these? Yeah. Why? Can't have zero on the bottom and there's a root there, right? Can't have a negative. So if I was just looking at this one, then I would say that t plus one would have to be greater than zero and t would have to be greater than negative one. If I was looking at just this one, I would say t plus 1 cannot equal 0 and t cannot equal negative 1. So if I look at my graph, if I was actually trying to match this pretty accurately, it would not start until after negative 1, which means there would be an open dot at negative 1 or wherever that value is pointing towards the right. So again, these are approximations. We don't even know for sure if that's where the negative one would be. We wouldn't know until we plugged it back in, if that's where it would start. But if you go to graph that on your calculator, the domain should be restricted. All right, the last part is actually working in reverse. So you're gonna get given an equation, two equations. One that is an x, or sorry, that one has a t and one doesn't. So either the t could be with the x or the t could be with the y. And you gotta plug it into the other one. So this time you're gonna get one with a t, one without a t, 
And your goal is to get an x equals and a y equals in which both of them have the t in it. So we're trying to form the parametric equation. So we're going to substitute the equation with the t into the initial equation that doesn't have the t. And then you'll get two equations, both of them, 1 and x equals, 1 and y equals, and both of them is going to have a t. So again, if we can substitute in, we can do this. So it says find a set of parametric equations that re to represent the graph of y equals 1 minus x squared using the parameters. These are two separate questions. It's not like there's two parameters for the same one. Two separate questions. So one equation is that y equals 1 minus the x squared. Does that have a t in it? No. No, so that's the one I'm going to be plugging into. The other one for a is t minus x. Or sorry, t equals x. So it's already solved for t. I mean, it's already solved for x, so I have to take that and plug it in. For the x. Exactly. So my equation is y equals 1 minus c squared and x equals t. They will be written as a y equals and an x equals format. Well, pretty simple. Yep. You can leave the t squared. Yeah. If it was in parentheses squared, I would expand it, which is what we'll do next. So now b says I'm still using y equals 1 minus x squared, but now it says t equals 1 minus x. So the first thing I have to do is solve that for what? Solve for t squared. Well, solve for x, sorry. Good. Solve for x. So I would get x. 1 minus t. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Yes. And then get rid of the negative. So you can either do 1 minus t or negative t plus 1. It doesn't matter. Right? And now I'm going to take this and plug it in here for the x. So y equals 1 minus 1 minus t squared. And then I'm going to expand it and foil it. If you remember your shortcut, you can use it because this is a perfect square. So it's square the first one, square the last one, and then double the product, negative 2t. Distribute the negative. These are going to cancel. Typically, you would write it in order of like negative t squared plus 2t, but I'm good with either answer. And again, my answer is both equations, the x equal, which is 1 minus t, and the y equals, which could be the 2t minus t squared, or negative t plus 2t, either one. So not bad, right? I mean, not super fun, but not as bad as 9-3, right? So 9-4, again, three different types of problems. So what, we need, what we're going to start doing is the WebAssign. And in the WebAssign, some of them are multi-part, so just pay attention.